same set of questions. The same set of questions will come later. So mm -hmm. at the beginning here, you've got to link this to what is the objective of your research. That's going to be here. So it's almost like a test question so that they understand where you're coming from. And if at that point they think this is not for them, then they can leave that, which we can maybe link to your comment that at the beginning you ask them, are you willing to complete this? And they press that button and then it takes them to the question here. Likewise, it's about the following construct. So if they, that construct isn't meaningful to them, they should exit the question. You've got to manage the context in which the respondents are going to talk to you. So there are specific context effects that come into play. So you have to make sure that the prior questions lead up to the next question. And you might find that specific questions influence how they perceive that. I mean, if you, uh, do, you do you know about neurolinguistic programming? Mm -hmm. Hands up. Okay. NLP is a marvelous technique that is used by psychologists for high-level work than what I'm going to use it here for. But in its, in its essence, what it says is that anything that you do, you pose in a negative or a positive way. So if I said to you, you didn't like today's session, did you? I'm phrasing it in a negative way. And I'm also phrasing it almost as a double barrel question, but I'm phrasing it in a negative way. So I'm sort of hinting to it, see this in a negative light. So how you phrase a question positively or negatively already influences the context in which this takes place. It's a very useful tool if you know that there are two options, there's a yes and a no, and you want to get participants to answer one thing or to talk about one thing if it was a yes, and to answer and to do something else if it's a no. So you might want to say, uh, have you ever experienced trauma in your life? And if they say yes, you've got to go and explore trauma. If they say no, you don't have to explore that. So then they can skip to a later on question. So out of that, you get a contingent question which builds on the yeses, and a skip question which builds on the noes. And the problem here is how do you design this in? So the theory talks about arrows and buttons that you do so that you link the no to the skip question and the yeses to the contingent questions. So how you manage that then becomes really important. Your questionnaire will be in terms of sections and every section will have statements that you make and then next to that a Likert scale. So it's almost like if you're doing a five point Likert scale you'll have six columns. Column one will be for the statement that you make. And we said yesterday it's not easy to make that statement in the right format so that the Likert scale will fit the from not at all to absolutely so. And if you use a matrix format throughout, you can ask a lot of questions. A lot of questions because they get into the habit of mark the most appropriate box with an X. And because it's the same, they jump and they jump and they jump and it's stuck. So if you can structure as much of your questionnaire as a matrix format, it's very easy for them to tick, tick, tick and go through. So you get a lot of information back very quickly. And if you buy into my argument yesterday, which we'll discuss again today later, that the Likert scale can be seen as numerical data, then you can do analyses with Likert scale information, like the x and standard deviations that I did, and actually more, which we'll talk about a little bit.